Hey folks, Fist25 here. <laughs> Once again with the ship review. This one is on one of my favorite series of ships in Star Citizen. Some people hate it, some people love it, but it is the one and only Aegis Vanguard series. That video is coming at you right now. Well, welcome to the channel, everybody. Before I get started, I'm going to go ahead and plug the channel. Can you please, if you haven't already, throw a like, subscribe. If you like the content, you can surely wait till the end of the video. There should be timestamps in there. And uh, if you do like our content, my content, Java's content, please hit that notification bell. It helps us out, helps our analytics. And then you'll know when all of our videos go live, the minute it goes live. I'm coming off of an awesome day today where I got to interview Cobra and Vega. Um, that was so much fun. I had such a blast doing it. First time I'd ever done like an interview type of thing. And um, I'm glad I picked Cobra and Vega as the first one because they're both amazing people. And it's such an amazing community. And I just want to tell everybody sincerely from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. You may play this game just phenomenal and so much so that I'm investing all this time and money into making videos, hopefully to make your life better. So with uh, that's enough of me uh, saying thank you and let's let's get on to the reviews. Now we're here at Port Arlsar, it may be dark outside, I have no idea. Let's go pull the first ship that we're going to take a look at. We're going to look at all four of them today. We're going to pull out the Aegis Vanguard Harbinger or Harbinger, however you want to say it. This guy, so I actually kind of theme my vanguards. I have all four, and I'm not trying to rub that in, but they're all four have different purposes. And uh, the Harbinger is, I like to think of it as the Harbinger of Doom because it's my big boy. It's, it's the only one pack in size five torpedoes. And when I take this ship out, I'm meaning to go after some bigger ships and I'm meaning to do some damage and the loadout I have on it kind of shows that as well with uh, cannons and, and ballistic cannons, laser cannons and the big combine 788 cannon uh, mounted on the nose and it's gimbaled even though I'm not going to use it gimbaled but I believe it's a better choice than the size 5 cannon look at this beauty Let's take a let's take a quick look around here. Let me go into my my camera mode. You to see a little bit of the magic there. This guy is just it's it's painted ready ready to go. You know what I mean? Look at that. That looks beautiful with Port Alisar up there. Wow. Oh geez, this this ship is just uh, just super cool. Look at that. Look at that big missile. Oh, that thing's gonna kill some people today. Well, yo, there's always a boom going on, right? Oh, makes you wonder what's going on. So, there's that big combine C788 uh, up there, mounted right under the nose. And then there's four bespoke weapons. Um, well, they're not truly bespoke, but they they only fit on a Vanguard series. And I have two of the uh, MBSA laser cannons and two of the CVSA ballistic cannons so i mean oh this ship is just this beast is just ready to go oh look there's another one up there <laughs> it's like harbinger and harbinger like simon and simon or something like that anyway um as we take a look around well i tell you what let's get let's get in the ship first and then we will uh we'll take it we'll take a little tour of the interior and the exterior and let, let's get all that done first before uh, Port Olsar tries to stow my ship, which they've done before because I wait too long. So that's the ramp access. This is the only way to get into any of the uh, Vanguard series. You have to go through the back ramp. Now it's a little weird here because yes, you have a door. You have to go all the way up to it to open it and then you have to come a little bit more forward to close your bottom hatch here, which you can then walk on and there's your 
like there's your quantum drive in here and stuff and um, you can access other components in here but let's go ahead and get the ship started get out into space a little bit then we'll, we'll do the we'll do an interior and then an exterior tour oh i love the styling of these things too i i used to not like them because it's very uh reminds me of like 70s 80s military but uh man it's it just I like that. It just, it's good. Man. I, li I like it. I like the aesthetic of it. Okay. So we put up our landing gear. You see our wings spread out as we put up our gear. As we head away from Port Olisar. Let's take a look at the exterior of the ship here. Um, coming on the port side. Uh, the guy always messes up my, my videos. <laughs> anyway, we have the, the slanted... Uh, at about a 45 degree angle vertical uh, stabilizers with uh, looks like a rudder on there. Um, we have a very small angled 45 degrees down, uh, like a horizontal stabilizer, maybe a, 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 a ventral stabilizer, stabilator, and then the top one is the dorsal. I'm not sure. Look at look at the way the engines are lined up there. Doesn't that look good? It just looks looks really cool. Um, very much like the Gladius, but like like it's very bigger brother. Um, we go ahead and drop the landing gear out, and see that even the landing gear has those like tank track type of look, except for the front ones. Uh, the back ones look really cool. I mean, technically you should be able to taxi in this thing. And as you saw, the wing actually retracted in uh, to give it a little bit smaller profile, and we'll retract the landing gear up. You see the wings spread out. It's got flaps. It's got an aileron. It even has a leading edge that even. So that's that's nice to know. It's definitely have lights. Um, although it looks like they're the same color on both sides. Um, the iconic look of the Harbinger is in the front, and it, I know there's sunlight on it, and I, and I want to show you this in the sunlight, but. It looks better when it's dark because those intake fins light up. Um, and actually, those may be the retro thrusters. No, the retro thrust comes out of the uh, out of what appears to be the beginning of some kind of a hydrogen turbine engine or something like that. They don't come out of the actual front, so maybe those are all hydrogen intakes. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and fire the the primary weapon that C788 thing's a monster and then all four of our uh vanguard bespoke weapons are tied to the secondary fire button oh those things are monstrous we're gonna do some damage today uh the starboard side it's a very symmetrical ship the starboard side matches exactly what the port side looks like and we have uh, the markings on the starboard side for 42 i guess squadron 42 um as we can see it kind of has this uh I wonder if I can get some sun on it. There we go. It kind of the co I mean, like the cockpit shape, the fuselage shape here to the back is very small. Actually, I mean it's big, but it looks small when compared to how big the engine nacelles are. Um, and and it's hooked up. The fuselage is hooked up to the engines with some kind of a three pronged strut system with the main strut in there, holding everything kind of together. Um, so it's a really cool look. Uh, on the top, uh, that's maneuvering thrusters right there. You can see the thrusters firing as we maneuver around. And then you also see the turret up there. Now this turret, even though I have all cannons on here, it just makes sense to have attritions on here with the way my loadout kind of is. And uh, that's the way I like this. And we'll hop in the turret here in a minute. Let's uh, see if we can get some light on the bottom side here. You can see those big torpedoes up there ready to go. Um, I believe those are the size fives. We'll see more of them on the inside. I have size fours and size fives on here. If I hit P, what happens? Nothing really happens. So maybe the bomb bay door opens when I actually fire a missile. I'm not sure. Um, I don't really pay attention to the bottom of the ship when I'm when I'm fighting, but 
uh, kind of a cool paint scheme. Looks good. Um, I apologize. This can be a long video. There's four different ships we're going to review here. So I uh, should keep that in mind. Now, here's here's the Vanguard in the dark from the top. And I think it looks just amazing. Uh, let's zoom out a little bit, see if we can get a, uh, a shot of the Vanguard, like the top of it in the dark, maybe. Something like that. Work with me here, Star Citizen. Well, Mimo, you might just have to go to the dark side of a moon or something like that. Let's get our cursor set. There we go. What do you guys think of that? That look right there is just jaw-dropping. The way the lights, the way the retro thrusters light up, the way the intakes light up. Uh, this thing's ready for combat. Oof, man. Okay, so let's tour. Let's take a tour of the inside real quick. Before we do the cockpit, we'll do the cockpit last. And then we'll go blow some stuff up. Cockpits are pretty much the same across the board. So um, as we get out of the seat, it is really, it's a two-person ship, but... You know, one pilot. We do have access to our different modules here. We have our cooling modules. Those are our big snowpack coolers. Uh, over here, shield generator, power plant. Other side, shield generator. Um, looks like we have a something that's not physicalized just on the right. I'm not sure what goes in there. Anyway, you can see our shields are actually in there. That's a uh, it's dual ramparts. And then we have our uh, our power plants in there, the JS 400s. That's really about it. You see some duct work here in the forward cabin. Um, as we transition aft, we can see our big uh, big size five torpedoes up here. Um, I would love to have someone fly this thing and, and then just watch it from here. And then there's some kind of a station here. Looks like you can open the door and do stuff, but right now the station doesn't work, but maybe that's someone can do some kind of missile engineering or something like that. Um, there are two beds on here, um, top and bottom bunk. Pilot gets top bunk. <laughs> right, always. Um, there's the turret access. We'll get in there in just a sec. Now, this back section is kind of different for all the different uh, vanguards. Um, for the Harbinger, you do have what looks like to be a small galley area up here, and then we have a munitions locker. It does work. You can put your gun in there. It will store. There is a uh, another storage area, maybe for armors and stuff like that. And then we have our, our standard toilet, um, which you can open, but you can't. Oh, whoops. You can open it, but you can't use it. So there's no pictures that are going to be taken under this one, but fairly small space and it does have a shower head in here and a non-functioning mirror. Apparently you can sanitize your hands. It's everything's the same paint scheme, which were just screams, screams military. Um, <laughs> we'll close the bathroom door. And then as we head back, you know, there's the quantum drive right there. That's uh, I think I left the stock one in here, which is a Jaeger. And uh, yeah, let's hop in this turret. There we go. Here we go, getting into the turret, coming up. All right, so for the turret power button, it is up here, power on. And we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna fire our attrition twos. So I chose attrition twos just so our turret gunner, what one would have a laser and wouldn't have to worry about running that ammo. I didn't do that for all the ships, but um, because I don't have a lot of lasers on here to begin with, and they're all cannons, I wanted the the ability if I did have a turret gunner to be able to actually, I guess, complement the rest of the ship. So let's go ahead and hop out of the turret. Always wait for your animation to finish before moving. You could fall through the ship. 
Let's get back in our pilot seat here. Okay, let's take a look at the Vanguard cockpit area. Uh, first off, the HUD is pretty much the same, you know, every ship around. There's no difference here. I can gimbal my weapons. I'm not going to. I'm not going to keep it in locked mode, but I am going to, I'm sorry, target mode. I am going to keep it in locked mode. I want all my shots firing at the same spot. Okay. <laughs> So as we look around, there are one, two, three, four, four multi-purpose displays and a 3D uh, radar. Um, you know what the multi-purpose displays do and the radar actually does work. Um, you can you can scale this. You can, well, you used to be able to scale it. I'm not super worried about it, but uh, <laughs> well, they used to work, guys. Sorry about that. Um, uh, let's look at some... Oh, jeez, I hate it when it hangs things. Let's look at some of the buttons. So there's our power button over here. Um, we have our spool quantum drive engine on, engine off. To the right, we can open our exterior, and we can do our press to unlock. Um, under, let's see, left side. We just. It looks like we just have our power off. Um, I do believe there is an ejection here. But you're going to have to use the buttons to do that. And there's, of course, our exit. That's about it. As far as the uh, the glass goes, you have a pretty darn good view. Although towards the top here by the caution panel and, and some of the looks like breaker panels or something up there. there it's just a little... It, the struts kind of get in the way. So cockpit view definitely is limited, but it's going to serve our purpose today because it is angled forward and down. So there's the interior. We did the exterior. Let's find a contract and let's go blow them up. I'm going to try to pull up some lore on, on this ship while we're, uh, while we're doing this. Remember, the first thing you got to take <laughs> is uh, call to arms. You definitely want to untrack your called arms because you don't want it to be your top mission. Um, something to note for the the Vanguard series is there there used to be and there still is uh, battlefield upgrade kits that you could buy back in the day. And what it would do is the outside of your ship would stay the same. Like if I had a Vanguard Warden, it would stay the same. But it would basically upgrade the rest of the fuselage so it would have the function of a harbinger but it would fly and have the outside of a warden so kind of best of both worlds type of thing so those are still pretty expensive <laughs> uh maybe they'll release them at invictus this year i'm not sure um but to give you a little background the aegis a3g vanguard harbinger is the ube standard fighter bomber converting the standard warden model's escape pod into a potent Bomb base, so no escape pod in this guy. The extended range of the Vanguard and the relatively small profile means it can go where carrier-based planes or larger strategic bombers don't. And then strike hard and make it back to the frontier bases. The Vanguard Harbinger is a powerful bomber that can operate out of the roughest forward operating bases. Uh, it is set for a crew of two. It has a cargo capacity of zero, so you can't carry cargo, but you can um, have do like box missions in it. The cost of the Harbinger is in-game uh, 2,050,500 Alpha UEC. You can rent it for 41,010 UEC per day or 20,505 rec. It takes about 20 minutes to claim. Uh, expedite is about 3 minutes, 23 seconds. And the fee to expedite is just over 5,000 Alpha UEC. Uh, you can buy this ship uh, during time-limited sales like Invictus Launch Week. Um, it goes for about $290, and I don't know if it's going to go up this year or, or what. Um, but yeah, so you can buy the ship at New Deal in Lorville, and uh, it was part of a twin-engine deep space fighter a stretch goal for the Kickstarter um, when they hit $60 million, and it was originally known as the Bulldog. Uh, the concept was inspired by twin-engine aircraft of World War II, like the de Havilland Mosquito, 
and the Messerschmitt 110. So as always, we uh, we take those designs and they are fantastic, and uh, we put them in games, space games. So look at this guy, very high risk target, seventeen thousand percent. Yeah, let's take this guy. We'll try to save the torpedoes for his friends. Oh, did we miss him? Or did he just... Is he delayed? Sometimes that happens. You miss a mission. Oh, dang it. I wanted to get them very high. Anyway, we'll take a... I guess we'll take a medium. Yeah, that one showed up. And uh, let's find him on our map. If our map works. Hey, map's working today. And of course, they're always over at yellow. Get a marker there. So, how many of you out there actually own a Vanguard Harbinger? And because, but you know, it used to be like one of the premier player versus player ships. Um, I think one of the premier PvP ships today is the Vanguard Sentinel. And I think it's for the EMP. However, EMP definitely got nerfed. And I think I think the actual premier PvP ship in 3.12 is the uh, the Asperia Talon and the Talon Shrike. Just because I think there's a bug with their uh, their hull hit points. It's super high. But I doubt that will always be the case. Whoa, didn't mean to zoom in that far. There we go. And we're going to move our speed up. Okay, our speed doesn't want to go up with the joystick. That's okay. Okay. Wow. My joystick's... Uh, there we go. Oh, are they inverted? Something's going on with my joystick profile. Oh, they're swapped. Well, that's that's not good. Looks like we'll have to do the old mouse and keyboard here and swap the joysticks back. I think my joy key is actually swapped. That's okay. So... His buddies are already coming towards me. This guy's in a freelancer miss, so it can definitely take some hits. Whoa. Not sure what that was. You see that big 788 doing all that damage? The dual rampart shields on here can definitely take a hit. Oh, I'm not used to fighting with mouse and keyboard. Just those bespoke cannons and this 788 is just oh it does so much damage boom sucker see ya all right let's find one of his buddies and shoot a torpedo at him let's get this guy don't joust me buddy okay we gotta go so far away Lock it. Oh, we missed it. Okay. Boom! See ya. <laughs> that is that is that's <laughs> countermeasures go off afterwards. Okay. Now let me see if I can well, let me see if I can get the other missiles going. There we go. And this guy's a freelancer miss. Yeah, see you didn't like that, did you? One shot, he's already saying crap. So let's lock some size fours on him. Woohoo! Let's try to get back in range after the joust. Yeah, stay away. So I let him joust, and then I'm trying to back up. Yeah, I am toying with him right now, folks. Okay, there's the Raptor size fours, the two of them. 
And I got two more size fives ready for this guy. It didn't look like those did like anything. Look how many countermeasures he's got going. Like all of them. Oh, dude. Well, let's shoot these size fives to see what happens. Sorry, guys. I'm just having a great time. I'm having fun here. All right. Oh, you want to shoot missiles at me, huh? Ah, you got... You came too close. No, don't ram into me. He's doing my tactics. All right, lock on to him. Oh, I got kind of the weird missile bug here. There we go. It's like you have to cycle your missiles to get it to work. Yeah, and I'm just sitting here. Well, I got one off. Well, it must not have hit. I didn't see any damage to him. Let's try one more. Do it. Shoot him. There we go. We ain't got no more missiles, buddy. That one hit. I don't think you have any countermeasures left. Well, the missiles just didn't do it on this guy. On the bigger ships, they just seem to not have as much of an impact. Although, two size five torpedo ship, but I tell you, those guns at 788, that thing is a monster, guys. And there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and head on back to Port Alsar, and we're going to swap into a different ship. Our next ship is going to be the Vanguard Hoplite, and that one's coming at you right now. All right, guys, as you can see, we have just pulled out the Aegis Vanguard Hoplite. Let's go ahead and get inside, and then we'll take a uh, quick tour of the ship. As soon as we get in, you're immediately going to know the difference. So. Oh, look at that. Drop seeds. Because it's a drop ship. <laughs> so, this ship reminds me very much of Starship Troopers. Um, now, I know they have more jump seeds, I'm sure. But, uh... That's... Ooh, every time. I love it. Every time. That's just what it reminds me of. So as you can see, it also has some camouflage patterning going on here. So we take her out for a spin. Let's take a look around the Thank Vanguard hoplite. There the guy goes again, ruining my uh ruining my video. <laughs> So the hoplite has this uh, OD green coloring uh, with camouflage. Other than that, it looks very similar to a Harbinger. Um, I kind of like the digital camo. It adds a very nice touch. But structurally, uh, except for the interior, it's it's the same as the all the other uh, Vanguard series, which makes sense because it's the same space frame, essentially. Uh, as we can see from the front, it has that really slick profile. And as you can see from the front, uh, maybe not. Oh, you see that gun turning? I have a repeater set up on here. So what I have on here is a Revenant Gatling. And then I have laser repeaters and ballistic repeaters as part of my bespokes. So we should do quite a bit of damage on here. On the turret, I have a set of GT uh, 215s, I believe, size 2s. All right, so I think that pretty much does it. I guess we can look at the belly. It's gonna look it's gonna look the same. Um, you notice I have a different missile set up here. Uh, size threes on this guy because I figure okay, the role of this aircraft is as a dropship, and I want it to play the role of a dropship. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, 
So I don't think a dropship is necessarily going to have those real big missiles to go after bigger targets. Its job's to get in on the ground, maybe take out a couple turrets on the ground, and, and for smaller size uh, missiles that works, and then get on the ground and get out of there. So, um, as you can see, the glass in the cockpit looks exactly the same as the Harbinger. Uh, the buttons are the same. Um, the MFDs are the same. The radar's the same. Everything's the same. I'm going to go into lock mode there. But let's go ahead and take a look at the interior of the hoplite. Now, the name is a little confusing here. Um, as you can see, we can get to our cooling modules. A hoplite is a Greek warrior who was very mobile on the battlefield. They didn't wear a ton of armor. It was all bronze armor, but um, I guess that's what this, this ship is supposed to represent, maybe. Um, as we look around, you see we have one, two, three, four, five, six drop seats. And then there's room for people to stand as well. And then we have a weapon storage locker. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you can store ten weapons right here. Um, we also have our quantum drive back there. Um, what else do we have in here? I think that's actually about it. Oh, there's a security camera here. I wish we had a security camera feed. That'd be super cool. Notice there's no bathroom. There's no toilet. There's none of that. There is no beds. Um, this ship is not meant for long space flight travels. It is meant to, to be a, you know, to deploy Marines or, or whoever. We also have a couple uh, weapons racks right there. So that's a total of 12, 13, 14 weapon racks. And I'm not sure what this, this is probably some kind of a radio operation where whoever's in these two seats are gonna control the radio. Let's go ahead and sit down. No, it doesn't, it doesn't like me to have that view. Okay. No, you're not gonna let me have it, are you? I wanted to do like a picture of me in the... There we go. Wow, that was like pulling teeth. Okay, so there's a picture of someone in the drop seat. And, you know, I look super content. I feel like I shouldn't be able to move the camera like this. I feel like I should be moving my head right now. But, <laughs> whatever. Okay, so let's go ahead and get out of the drop seat. That's a double Y to get out of there on this one. Uh, the turret is going to be the exact same. I think I messed myself up, or I messed up the controls by doing whatever I did. Because I'm totally screwed up right now. <laughs> I may have fixed my joysticks, but I certainly did not fix... May, oh, maybe that worked. That worked. Wow, that was super crazy. Sometimes the bugs in this game are weird. So, this is made to deploy troops in battle, deploy them hot. The pilot can open the back seat or the back area to deploy them out as well. Let's, uh... I think now that I got my stick problem fixed... Yeah, it's fixed! Finally, what that was guys was I had uh, recently done a hard drive upgrade to my computer and which means I had to take it apart put everything in there and when I plugged the joysticks back in <laughs> I had uh, mistakenly uh, put one stick above the other as far as the USBs go so it recognized the other stick before the other stick anyway so I had I had them swapped where my right stick controlled my throttle instead of uh, moving around the nose of the ship. So, but now everything's working, everything's fixed, everything's smooth. Right stick, left stick, ready to go. So, um, I did have to hop out of the game uh, to do that. So, I have to redo Call of Arms. Let's see what a, a size four Revenant I uh, love the Revenant. And uh, the the other, the two ballistic repeaters and two laser repeaters on the Bestoke mounts. Let's see what they can do to a target. Plus maybe some size threes. Wow, there's a lot of uh, 
crime stats over here. I do have a very high risk target. Let's take it. Let's see where Chin Chinditu is. While we're in Quantum, I will try to give you a little background on the Vanguard Hoplite. Let me just line up to it. So the Aegis Vanguard Hoplite is a cross between the winning Vanguard Deep Space Fighter and a dedicated boarding ship. Adapting the reliable design for amphibious operations, which basically means Marines, the Hoplite is the perfect tool for inserting an armored strike team with enough firepower to get them out again, which I firmly believe, um, even though it's, it's a Hoplite, it's still a Vanguard and it's still a me machine. Um, it does have a crew of one to two. It doesn't carry any cargo. None of the vanguards carry cargo, but they, again, you can do box missions. This guy actually goes for more than the Harbinger. You can buy this ship at the New Deal Shipyard in Lorville for 3,104,200 alpha UEC. I'm not sure why CIG values this more because nobody uses dropships. Maybe once theaters of war come in, It'll work, but um, you can rent this guy for 62,084 Alpha UBC a day or 31,000 rec. Um, it has a smaller claim time than the Harbinger at 18 minutes, 34 seconds with a three minute expedite. And a, the expedite fee is about 4,600 Alpha UBC. Um, you can't just go buy the Hoplite here. You have to purchase it at a time limit in sale like Invictus or the free or the other free flies. Um, it does retail for 235 US dollars. Um, just like all the other Vanguards, it is kind of an older design and it's about 214 years old as it was introduced in 2737. Ooh, there's our guy. Um, uh, excuse me. Let's take care of this guy and we will go over some of the other stuff. That's what I like about size three. They engage pretty far away. Ooh, three of them. What's that gonna do to our warden? Going up against another Vanguard. You see how I turned into him there? That's what I was talking about in my dog fighting video. I turned in, plus thrustered into him, and used the afterburners just to kind of get on his six. That big remnant doing some damage, boom shakalaka. All right, while we wait for his friends to show up, um. So we, we already talked about the, the concept of the Vanguards being the De Havilland Mosquito and the Messerschmitt 110. But um, the Hoplite was actually not part of the initial three variants of the Vanguard series. It was created due to the requirement of a dropship in Squadron 42. Squadron 42 relies heavily on Aegis ships. With the expanded interior to house a uh, drop team, the exterior hull is expanded compared to other variants. So it is a little bit bigger than the other variants. Oh, I lost my range on him. I think I got one missile off. There we go. I got all those missiles off. Let's see if those hit him. Yeah, tip him out. That had to be a Hornet. Yep. All right. Next guy, a Drake Buccaneer. Those shotguns. You're still, I mean, even though I have dual FR-76s on here, it's going to take a lot to get through the shields of this ship. Okay, so you can see the Revenant and these cannons just made absolutely short work of very high risk targets. I mean, now I know I didn't have a Valkyrie on this one, but uh, it just made some pretty darn good money in a very small amount of time. So let's uh, find Crusader if we can. 
Ooh, it's dark out here. Maybe we can actually get a good picture of... Yeah. Look at the Vanguard hoplite here. The ship is mean looking. I, just this whole space frame. Just stupendous. Oh, there's Crusader right in the background. Lit up. That looks awesome, doesn't it? Look at that. That may be the thumbnail, ladies and gentlemen. With Crusader on a tilt. Woo. So, I'm thinking about doing some behind the scenes videos for you guys. Um, but I think I'm going to wait until after we hit the 250 subscriber mark. Um, if you're watching this, this is pretty much the middle of the, of the ship review part of the video. Uh, Joe and I, when we hit 250 subscribers, we're going to do a scheduled live stream. And we're going to be giving away some in-game Alpha UEC. Uh, at least to uh, 2.5 million for our subscriber count uh, of 250. So, but to, to qualify to get that, you're going to have to be part of the live stream. You're going to have to be in the chat. And I'll use like a program randomizer type deal to figure out who gets it unless someone else just really wants to give it up to someone else that's that's fine too uh, our community is very very giving um but that's what we're looking to do so if you are fairly new to the game and you're looking for some money and you want to win get to the live stream hang out with us fly with us i'll go to the shipyard with you and we'll we'll buy your ship in game and uh, I think that would be super fun because I do like hanging out with you guys. Oh, there we go. A little bit of a delay there. And uh, yeah, so our next uh, ship we're going to review is the Aegis Vanguard Sentinel, the EMP ship, the PVP ship. So stay tuned for that. That's coming at you right now. Okay, guys, as you can see right in front of us is the Vanguard Sentinel. The Aegis A3 Gulf Vanguard Sentinel is an electronic warfare ship that is designed to fight smart instead of taking enemies head on. The conversion features an AR cockpit, an external E war pod, decoy missiles, and a set of EMP charges. Vanguard Sentinels often provide necessary combat support for combined operations. A lone sentinel assigned to wild weasel tasks is frequently paired with harbinger boom, bomb, bomb, boomers, bombers and warden escorts for large attack missions. So I know this guy is dark, but I just wanted to show you out here. Let's go ahead and get inside the ship and we will do our tour from uh, in there, interior and exterior. Come on, let's open up the ship. There we go. So, as you can see, the back side is the exact same. Bottom drive. Whoa, that's a little bit different. Am I right? We're going to get into the electronic version of this ship here in just a sec. Let's get into the cockpit and get out of here before PO tows my ship. So, I used to fly this ship a lot. A lot. But, uh... I haven't flown it in a while. This is the first time I've flown it in a while, so bear with me. All right, we're going to take off. We're going to spread our wings now autom automatically just right off the bat. You notice there's a color difference. We got the, uh, the UEE colors, the gold and the blue. And I think it looks super, super cool. Look at that. Thank you. So it's got it's got the exact same body and frame design of the other ships uh, for all intents and purposes here, guys. Um, it's got that same just mean look from the front, except this guy has a few different weapons on there. And yes, that's a big C-788 on the front. And I actually have some distortion cannons on here. Because, um, you know, I'm hoping to bring down shields for my turrets. I have GT-215s. You can see. Look at those missiles right there, ready to go. Those are, I believe I have a bunch of size twos in here. 
So this guy would be basically a PvP type of ship. Um, um, although EMP doesn't do a whole lot anymore, it was nerfed. This guy is an EMP ship, and uh, it has a much bigger EMP drive than the, the other ships of its class. Um, of its class of other EMP ships. <laughs> so as you can see, the cockpit is the same, same button, same layout, same displays, same glass. All that stuff is the same. Um, as you would expect with a Vanguard ship, right? Let's uh, hop out of the seat and let's take a look around. So on the interior, we have our standard cooling modules right there and our power plants, our shield generators. So all that is the same here in the forward part of the fuselage. We do have two beds in here. Yeah, I do have a helmet on. Somehow I don't have a light on this helmet anymore interesting um but some of the different stuff it's it's a lot more electronic right there's like drives and servers and apparently bearing makes this and there's there's all kinds of other stuff on here uh there's an engineer station which doesn't work but i imagine one day it will work and you'll be able to do some kind of a minor data running maybe or some kind of data storage because there's this whole platform of screens here which looks amazing. There is a munitions door for being able to store your guns. There is a galley area over here. And over here, uh, another storage locker. And just like in the Harbinger, we have a restroom, a toilet. So not much else to see, guys. That is the ship interior. Let's go ahead and get back in the cockpit because it's loud back there. And uh, let's go over the weapons I have loaded on here. And then we'll take her dogfight a little bit. Hopefully get some EMP shots. So uh, because we have our target in our top right of our HUD, I'm going to go ahead and uh, change this target menu to our weapons menu. And just like with any other EMP gun, you have to actually turn it on. So you got to hit the on button. Come on, there we go. So the EMP is now on and it's going to be tied to your secondary fire. You can see I have 12 missiles on here. For my guns, I have the C788 cannon. I got the EMP generator. I got a two CVSA cannons, which are the ballistics, and the EVSD, which are distortions. So this thing is super ballistic with some distortions in there to drop the shields. Um, I didn't want to go with lasers on this because I just wanted to do something different. As far as missiles go, I have some size three arresters, Dominator twos, and Strike Force twos, uh, four of each. So, let's uh, take a look from the outside here and let's start generating the EMP bubble. We'll see how far around the ship it gets. That's almost halfway. It does take a little bit longer to charge this guy. We're almost charged. And we're charged. So there's the bubble. You can see our front gun sticks out a little bit. Our wings stick out. And our tail sides stick out. But uh, this thing is ready to go, ready to fire. So let's go. Let's go find a target to fire it on. And we'll see how well it does. Pay attention to the enemy's shields when we get to them. We're going to take a very high risk target. We'll see how we do. While we're in Quantum, I'll go over a little bit more of the ship. Remember, you can maintain your EMP while you're in Quantum. So, this ship has a crew of two. Of course, carries no cargo, but obviously can do box missions. It retails pretty cheap for two million. Uh, 12,000 Alpha UEC at New Deal in Lorville. You can rent it for 40,000, 240 Alpha UEC or 20,000 wreck per day. The claim time on this guy is 21 minutes, 56, uh, 56 seconds. Expedite is three minutes, 39 seconds. And it costs expedite fee of 5,485 Alpha UEC. Uh, this uh, ship, just like the other Vanguards, are time limited sales. 
Um, but when it does go on sale, you should be able to pick it up for right around $275 US. As I said, it is kind of the one of the premier PvP ships right now, um, and that's because of the EMP. The Sentinel is intended as something of a trickster ship, oriented towards causing confusion on the battlefield, from EMP pulses to command and control interference, which is, must be where those the engineer stations is for. The Vanguard Sentinel will support battlefield operations by making it all that much harder for opponents to stay in contact and have proper information. So, EMP and some kind of electronic um, interference it'll be able to do. Um, this was one of the original Vanguard lines, so no, nothing different than that. Oh, look, our system's overheating, probably because our EMP. So we got to find our target here. Let's see if we can uh, get close to him and hit him with our EMP. I'm thinking about a kilometer out, guys. Right here. Well, it, it didn't look like he took any type of shield damage. He's definitely taking damage from that C-88. I do kind of like having all my all my fire stuff on one trigger. It's kind of nice. You can see how long this cooldown is. It does take a long time. Get a couple of... So Valkyrie's on a very hard. They can take some. They can take some hits. Launch a couple missiles at him. All right, he took some damage on that one. Let's charge our EMP back up. I don't remember the effective range on this, but we will definitely go over that when we uh, when we do the Urkel loadout. Don't run into that asteroid. I want to kill you myself. Don't you do it. All right, so we're about five, 600 out. Let's let's hit it. Oh yeah, that EMP took him down a little bit. But his shields flashed, it didn't go out. That's a little weird. So I don't think his ship is really disabled at all. So I'm not sure what we can do. But I'm going to start rapid firing these cannons. He's definitely taking some damage. Whoa. You're turning different directions here, buddy. Makes you hard to hit. Wow, this Valk is really taking some hits. They're they're hard to do anything with while well, they're just spinning like that. Okay. I got him, I guess. Desync. Okay, let's see what we can do against the Cuddy Black with this EMP. Alright, let's hit it. Right now, even though it's not charged all the way. That ah, did a little bit. It's pretty far away. With a bigger EMP, you should be able to do more from further away. You just run into that asteroid? Well, yeah, this guy's... I feel like I have less control. You didn't stand a chance against the cannon, buddy. Is this two cutty blacks? It is. Let's get some missiles on you, fella. Charge our EMP at the same time. but I don't know if it did any damage. I 
want to get some more missiles on him. Oh, hey, no curse. Can't tell if those did any damage. do not look like that guy even hit. Although I didn't see any countermeasures. Hey, what is with going backwards and forwards? This D6 driving me crazy. Nice thing about size twos is they they lock on pretty quick. All right, your kill wasn't enough to cover the cost of my missiles, buddy. So let me know what you guys think about the Vanguard Sentinel. Uh, like I used to fly it a lot, as I told you, but. Notice its flight characteristics, just like any of the other vanguards. It's, it's okay. I mean, it definitely gets the job done, but uh, our next ship is going to be the the vanguard that actually flies the best. And it's also my favorite vanguard out of all of them. And that would be the Vanguard Warden. So, as I make my way back to PO to go pick up old Bessie. Stay tuned and we'll be right back. And what do my wondering eyes should appear but an anxious Vanguard warden ready to kill very high risk targets. Alright guys, this is the final ship in the Vanguard series. As you can see, I got a big old attrition 5 mounted on the nose of this guy and those are four laser repeaters for the bespoke weapons and some attrition twos on top so the vanguard warden is my laser ship i do not worry about ammo with this guy <clears throat> it's my beast it's my favorite out of the vanguard line and you're gonna probably see why here in just a minute i got some size three missiles loaded on here and let's go ahead and let's get a uh, get loaded into this ship. All right, look at that. It's like straight 1970s in here. <laughs> I'll do the quick ship tour while we're at it because everything else is the same, really, except these are kind of on different sides. So you do have the, the full restroom in here with the toilet and the shower head. Everything is this crazy blue color. You have the munitions store. You have the turrets up there. You have your storage compartment. You have two beds for a crew of two. Um, you have access to avionics. Oh no. Well, apparently we're gonna go into the turret everywhere. So, what I just did, don't do that, because you're not supposed to do that. So. <laughs> well, let's hop out of the turret real quick. It is fun flying this ship with someone in the turret, though. Um, I can't wait to, to be doing that kind of a gameplay. Okay, so there's avionics, even though there's no avionics in there. This is another ancient ear station, but I don't have any big, huge missiles hanging out around here. Um, and that's that's pretty much the interior of the Aegis uh, uh, Vanguard Warden. Almost said Avenger there. Everything else, as far as the forward cockpit is concerned, is the same. The cockpit itself is the same. The layout is the same. But the way the ship flies, hopefully you should see the difference here. Let's fire the ship up. Love that sound. And let's start taking off. You see the color of this guy is a little bit different as we raise our gear. It's more of a kind of a dark gray mixed with some whites or like a, like a lighter gray and some reds. 
And I don't know if you noticed, but just right away, the turning radius is better on the Vanguard Warden. Let's uh, straighten our ship here as we'll take a little, little look around here. The grays and, and the reds, uh, the wear on the ship right there. I don't know if that's going to go away in 313, but I like it. The ship looks looks like it's been used. It looks like people have flown this thing. And there's my little beanie head there in the cockpit. And this thing is... It's, it's my favorite of the series just because it flies the best. Um, so pay attention when I do the, the dogfight because... Um, you're going to see it's going to be a little bit different. As far as the weapons go, my Attrition 5 mounted on the front and my Bespoke. Look how fast those lasers are going. So when I get full lasers going and then a turret's going too, it's 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 a beast. And I don't have to worry about ammo. Now, you don't have to do your build this way, but this is the way I like building my, uh, my Warden. So... Let's, we're still charging our shields. I have a little bit different of a shield setup on this guy because I do do dogfighting more with it. Um, but we're gonna go over all the actual pitch roll yaw stats when we hit Urkel, so uh, you should see the difference. Sorry, just had to look at it one more time. Um, let's go find a contract. It's funny because it's like my favorite of the Vanguard series, but I'm showing probably the least amount. Wow, well, there's only low risk targets. Um, someone must have snatched up all the targets and they're doing them one by one, I guess. I don't want a PvP as part of a like a ship tutorial, so we'll just take a low risk target for now. Maybe we'll even do two. I just kind of wanted to show off the power of this ship. So real quick, we're going to go into the weapons. Um, so you're going to see everything's turned on, right? Um, 12 missiles, right? Yep. So the Attrition 5 on the front and four GBSR bespoke laser repeaters on the nose. And then I have eight Strike Force 2s and four Arrestor 3s. I guess we're going to go to Yella anyway. Oh, I already did it. Never mind. I didn't know if I had set the map. So the Aegis A3G Vanguard Warden is a long-range military fighter which features extensive forward-mounted weaponry designed to tear through the shields and armor of other spacecraft. So named because their multiple jump range allows them to form the vanguard of any military expedition. Vanguards have seen extensive service against the Van Duel. Um, so the Vanguard Warden is a two crew uh, heavy fighter, basically. Let's consider the medium fighter. Um, it's got zero SCU cargo capacity. Um, it, uh, it will carry boxes. I believe it's also the most expensive. Oh, geez, here we go. They're already here. use our lasers very fast firing oh there we go man that was quick money right I already took out the m50 before it even got to me oh, that was way too fast that eh, was only six grand let's take out his friends buccaneer again I can do extensive fighting in this for long periods of time oh look how fast that was man I, I didn't kill the buck that fast of the other ships. Uh, that Attrition 5 is just a monster at close range. Um, so you can purchase this ship in-game at New Deal Shipyard in Lorville for 3,387,800 off of EDC. I think it's the most expensive of any of the Vanguards. You can rent it for 67, 756 off of EDC a day or 25,000 even rack uh, per day. The claim time is 20 minutes and 15 seconds. Expedite time is 3 minutes, 23 seconds. The expedite fee is 5,065 Alpha UEC. This ship uh, is a limited time uh, sale event. So Invictus or 
uh, free fly, and it costs roughly two hundred and sixty dollars. The last time it was sold, um, there's not much else that goes with this ship as far as uh, lore goes. Um, so take that like as you will, and I guess let's try to find uh, another bounty because. Man, that one went so fast. Oh, jeez. Who took all the good bounties here? Oh, did something show up just as I got off? No. Eh, at least it's close. So I guess we'll show, we'll try to show off some missiles here. I didn't expect those guns to go necessarily that fast with the guns. Um, but if you notice, the, the this ship accelerates faster. Um, it accelerates faster into and out of the turns. Uh, it performs its rolls faster. At least it seems to me that it performs its uh, yaw and pitch maneuvers faster as well. It's a faster rate. And there's, I mean, it looks the same, though. There's nothing I can see flight surface-wise. Not that it would matter because we're not in atmosphere anyway, but... Maybe just the thrusters have more power, I guess would be like a lore reason to do that. All right, let's see if these guys show up as fast as the other ones. Yep, they sure did. Well, it's an Aurora LN. Let's see what two size threes do to it. Didn't kill it. Switch to size twos. Alright, two size twos. Oh, uh, might have missed it. I like the, 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 the Harbinger size fours and fives. They pretty much take out any small ship. Just like those guns did really, really fast. Let's see if its friends show up. So, while we're waiting for his buddies, um, feel free to comment in the comment section as we tend to reply to every single person who comments. Um... I might not agree with you on some of the stuff, but that's okay. Because it's more important just to have the conversation. Oh, there he is. Only one friend, huh? Well, at least it's a Gladius. Little bit of desync. Woo! That was. Ah, it's it's just too quick. It's too quick. Oh, where's anybody else here? Nope. Okay. So let me know what you guys think about the the old uh, the Aegis Warden or the Aegis <laughs> Vanguard Warden. The Aegis Vanguard Warden. Let's get the tongue tied there. Uh, and my setup for it with all lasers with the big attrition five. That thing heats up and it's in close range. It's just a it's a behemoth. Uh, this and I, I really like the paint scheme of this ship as well. So without further ado, guys, we're going to head on over to Urkel.games uh, to the DPS calculator live. And we're going to do some loadouts on these four ships. I'm going to try to keep it as quick as I can. And then we're going to look at some chase camera footage of each of the four ships in, in combat. Try to do it justice. And then we'll end the video. Thanks for watching so far. And uh, take it away, me. All right, guys. So here we are at Herbal.Games at the DPS calculator with the first ship on the line pulled up. And this is the Vanguard Harbinger. Um, let's take a look at its base stats before we get into it too much. 
We can see that uh, with its C788 that's loaded stock on a gimbal and it's uh, four ballistic cannons, it does 1846 DPS. With 1631 alpha damage, that is a ton. Um, but what, what I'm going to do here is, is just give it, I'm going to change these two ballistic cannons over to laser cannons to give us a little bit of a feel to take down the shields. So 1846 is our DPS. We're probably going to lower it, but what, and it does get lowered, but it's not all ballistic now. There's a little bit of laser in there. It's going to take down the shields a little bit. Um, if you notice, when we go in here, it, this website knows we're in a Vanguard. So the only thing I can put on it is uh, these type of cannons, these type of repeaters, distortion repeater, distortion, distortion cannon, a ballistic repeater, and a ballistic cannon. Now, these are all basically bespoke to vanguard series it's the only size two ones that fit on its nose um can't put any other weapons there now for the gun like we could actually take off the gimbal put on a size five uh we can go to um one of the laser cannons here we can go to the light strike five and get a lot more dps uh, a lot more consistent dps with the m7 or we could go up to the dead bowl five um but I don't think it hits as hard, really, and, and it's slower than the 788. So I have no problem going fixed and picking the 788 because that thing is a beast. And it fires a little bit faster, so I know its DPS is lower, but it, it's because its alpha damage is a little bit lower, but it's... And that thing's a monster. So load it out however you want, but this is how I like to load it out. So we lose a little bit of DPS, but... Um, I think we gained some consistency and some different damage types. Moving on to the turrets. Uh, I don't like the rocket pods. Never have. Um, maybe in the future they'll get better, but I like to replace those out um, with Ballistic Gatling, so Scorpion GT215s. Um, you can also put Attrition 2s on there if you wanted to add more laser in there. Now, the missiles are a whole different ball of wax here. Okay, The missiles right now... <laughs> It says 109,000 damage. Um, we're going to change that. We're going to get rid of these size twos and threes. You have the Vanguard 535 Bespoke Stalker 5 a torpedo launcher on here with three torpedoes. You can't get rid of that. Um, it stays on the ship. But what you can do is change all these missile launchers over to size fours. Boom. Now see there are three torps here weird it says they do 62,000 damage um yeah that's 62,000 it's up there okay so let's uh let's put our size fours on there now you could put the uh raptors on there they do higher damage and i usually mix it up a little bit with cross section and uh, em the cross section is actually the assailant not the pathfinder so let's just let's go one for one here and uh, so now I, I know we have less missiles on here, right? Uh, <laughs> we have four size fours and three size fives. And that's still a lot of missiles and it does overall less damage. But each missile, when they hit, they will hit harder. And like I said, this is how I like my Vanguard coming in like a big old tank. Um, uh, speaking of shields, I typically, would, if I only had access to basic ships, I would go with two ramparts. It's industrial shield. It's the most hit point pool and slowest charging. But I, I usually go for the most hit point pool I can for the shields. Now, if you have a prowler, and you're okay. Like, say you have more than one, or you don't use your prowler, and you're okay with stripping its shields, then you could certainly put the Sukaron on there. And what that's going to do, at least one of them, it's going to give you more of a shield pull and it's going to make you almost impervious to ballistics if you have two super balls. Um, you'll take, you know, laser damage is a little bit more, but if you mix these up, Rampart and Sucron, I find out has a really good combination. Very slow to charge, very slow, but they can take a beating before you even get to the hole. So something else to think about. 
Um, a full charge of uh, these shields is 122 seconds, so two minutes. But it's 70,000 hit points of shield. That is enormous. enormous. Um, for the power plants, we would go with our standard JS400s for a size 2 ship. For the coolers, um, I will go with the snow packs, the industrials. This is the counterpart to the ultra flow. And for the quantum drive, it has a Jaeger on it, which is a military uh, B. Uh, just leave it. It's fine. You don't need an XL1. The Jaeger is fine. You can get anywhere in, in Stanton with it. And it, it'll cost you a little bit less gas than the XL1. And the XL1 ain't going to save you that much more time. It's two, four, two minutes, 48 seconds to PO um, to Microtech. Um, or to Hurston, the XL1 saves you six seconds. It's gonna cost you 260 grand. Leave the Jaeger on there. You can't change the rest of this stuff. Um, so if we look over here at our power, we're way below our power requirement um, because of those two JS400s. So that's really good. And then you look at our cooling, we're barely touching these snow packs, which gives us a lot of room for afterburner and it gives us a lot of room to, to fire our weapons for a long time. However, our EM signature is ridiculously high. Uh, you're going in loud and proud with this thing. Everybody's going to know you're coming. So, something to think about with uh, with this ship. Um, let me go back to the base model real quick here. Um, I just wanted to show you something here. The whole hit points, 26,000. Um, it's more than a Talon, guys, but it is a bigger ship. Um, this thing has a lot of armor and it can take a pretty big beating. Um, if we look at the pitch, yaw and roll, uh, we can see it's 54, 54, 110. When we get to the warden, keep that in mind. The uh, hydrogen and fuel, size 2, it'll get you anywhere in stand with uh, the current quantum drive. So let's switch over to the, uh, the Vanguard uh, Hoplite. Okay, so here's the Vanguard Hoplite. Um, let's go over its uh, basic stats here. It has, again, 54, 54, 110 for its Pixiao roll. Same quantum. Um, its whole HP is 25,200, so still extremely beefy. Um, you can see its stock loadout is a Revenant and then all ballistic repeaters. I don't mind this. I don't mind this at all, um, to be completely honest with you. Just like I put my Warden as a full laser ship, I don't mind a ship that's made to be a dropship having just full ballistic repeaters going at it. Um, I think it's fine, and I'm going to leave it alone. However, if you want to actually do some dogfighting in here, you should probably consider putting a laser repeater. Um, just my two cents. The Revenant is far enough down that it, the muzzle flash is not going to affect you in 3.12, as, as you saw when we flew it around. So I would actually just keep the stock loadout as is. I think it's uh, I think it's really good. Um, although you don't have any laser, it's still good. Now, I would probably change out the turret for a GT215 versus a, uh, a Sawbuck because um, they're more efficient and there's more DPS. The, uh, the Ignite 2s and the Dominator 2s. Uh, I would actually upgrade to a size 3 uh, for both of my missile launchers. That gives me four size 3s. I would go with uh, Thunderbolt 3s and Arrestor 3s. Um, that, that gives me two each, which is enough if you're coming in on a dropship mission um, to take out some turrets or something like that. Now for shields, a little bit different for a dropship. Military FR-76s. Um, a lot less hit points than, than excuse me, than the Rampart series. Uh, almost 8,000 less, but the charge time is way faster. Um, if you look at the Rampart series, the regen is 173 hit points a second, um, where the FR-76 is 310 hit points a second. So what I would go with, because you're going to be taking a lot of shield damage coming in, um, the faster regenerating shields is, in my opinion, for this type of ship, this type of mission is better. 
You can get a full charge in just over a minute at 82 seconds, and it recharges at 620 hit points a second. Um, now for the power plants and the coolers, uh, I'm going to do the same deal as last time. Power plants, JS400s. And the coolers, um, I'm going to pick the snowpacks. And for the quantum drive, it's a crossfield. It's a military grade C. Again, just leave it alone. It's 10 seconds of your life. You don't need to pay 260 grand for a faster quantum. Um, the military grade C, it's fast. Leave it alone. Crossfield's great. So, we are under our power curve here. We're about a third. And we are way under our cooling. We're, I don't know, a 20th of our cooling capacity. Which is good because that gives us a lot of room to maneuver. Um, you know, we can fire those weapons for quite a while um, before they overheat or anything like that. Either. So, this is the loadout for the Vanguard Hoplite. Let's move on to the loadout for the Vanguard Sentinel. Okay, guys, for the Vanguard Sentinel, <laughs> let's take a look at its base stats. Again, 54 degree pitch, yeah, and 110 degree roll. Same hydrogen and quantum fuel. Full HP, 25,000. So the loadout on this guy is quite a bit different. It's got a gimbal Attrition 4, and it's got Distortion Repeaters. Uh, if you've watched my other videos, you will know I don't particularly love distortion weapons. Um, so what I would recommend here is to go add some ballistics in here and put a couple BVRSs in, in place of the distortions. The distortions are going to take down the shields. The BVRSs are going to penetrate the armor. The attrition is just going to dominate as well. But I'm going to put the 788 on there. Uh, instead, and then if you want, you can change these ballistic repeaters out to laser repeaters. I think this is a monster build. Also considering it has EMP. Um, the For the turrets, and by the way, the, the damage for all this is 1884, which is right up there with the Harbinger. Uh, for the turrets, um, depending on what you put on the, the size 2 fixed, if you put lasers, put Ballista Gatling in the turret. If you put ballistics on the size twos, then go ahead and put some attrition twos on there. Either way, it's more DPS for the turret. Uh, for the missiles, um, I like to stay with size twos mm -hmm. on this ship. Now I know there's probably some size threes on there, but I would actually go all size twos instead of size threes. Um, I would go strike force twos. And I would change the Ignites out to Dominators. So you have a mix of EM and Cross Engine. And I think for a ship that's going to be doing a lot of PvP, a lot of dogfighting like that, just getting some initial shields down with missiles is really helpful. Plus there's a ton of them. You have 16 missiles. That's a lot for any ship. Uh, for the shields. So this guy's a little bit different story. If you can afford to do a a, a uh, Rampart and a Sucheron on the Sentinel, do it. If you can't, because it PVPs, I would go with a mix of a Rampart and an FR-76. So that'll give you a little bit faster loadout or charge time. Um, but you'll still have a little bit higher hit point pool with the Ramparts. I think it's a good combination. Especially for PvP, you could go to Rampart, you could go to FR-76, or or like a FR-76 and a Sucheron, something like that. The options are up to you. Uh, for the power plants, again, JS-400. You can see the stock power plants were maxed out. Uh, for the coolers, go with the snowpacks. And for the quantum drive, this one you want to upgrade, because this is a stealth grade C. I would go back to the military. I do any one of the militaries, but for now I'll put an XL1 on there. Um, so you can see over here, high damage, high damage uh, for the turret, high damage for the missiles. Uh, we'll get to EMP in a sec. That's a pretty high shield hit point pool. You get a full charge in exactly two minutes. 483 hit points a second with that FR-76. Your power is just under half, which is acceptable. Um, considering the, the amount of distortion and lasers you have. 
and your cooling is way down there, just like the other ones. Um, now, for the EMP, uh, let's look at this guy. The uh, the Rep BS uh, Burst Generator, built specifically for the Aegis Vanguard Sentinel, being modified. I'm sorry, bearing modified the technology used in their reputable Rep 8 uh, to design an effective, non lethal weapon that integrates seamlessly within the Sentinel. Um, now, the Rep 8 is the one that's on the Aegis Avenger uh, Warlock. So, this is just a probably a bigger model. It is a size 4 EMP. It does 6,000 damage, I guess, to shields. Uh, your radius minimum, so you want to be at least 600 meters. That's what I should have checked before the video. You got to be at least 600 meters away, and then your maximum radius is 2.2 meters. Or two, I'm sorry, 2.2 kilometers. You can be pretty far away and hit these people with an EMP. So keep that in mind. You hit that 2 kilometer mark, hit that EMP. Because it has an unleash time of 2 seconds. So even if they're hauling butt towards you, and you're at two, 2 kilometers... You hit it, it's going to hit them before they hit 600 meters most most times. Uh, 20 second charge time, really long charge time. Um, I don't overclock, so I'm not worried about that stuff. Uh, obviously, it'll make your temperature and your power to EM go up. Uh, it says max distortion damage is 1,000. I'm not quite sure what that means, if that's just damage to shields or, or what. But... Um, there you go. There's some stats on the EMP. And uh, yeah, the Aegis uh, Vanguard Sentinel monster ship. And let's go on to my favorite ship in the next part here, the Aegis Vanguard Warden. All right, guys. So here's the Vanguard Warden. Um, as you can see, it's pitching yacht is again 54 degrees. It feels faster, though, but its roll is 108 degrees. So... Uh, Keep that in mind. Um, it, its maneuverability is better than the other Vanguards. Um, whole HP 25,000, so about the same. It, I think it's the same across the board there. Um, and it does have, I believe, some more speed um, than, than the other Vanguards. Uh, I'm going to bring up another Vanguard in my other window here while I'm recording. Let me bring up the Harbinger. So the Harbinger, um, it actually has more roll. It says it has 110 degrees a second, but I don't believe it because the Warden just handles differently. Um, the Harbinger's SEM speed is 171. The Warden is 169, but the Warden has a higher top end speed of 1116 versus the Harbinger's 1022. Um, so that means the Warden is faster, but it just, it, the way it turns... It feels more maneuverable. It just feels better. It's a better flyer. Um, it definitely flies better in atmosphere. So, you know, keep that in mind. I don't know how accurate these stats are. They're supposed to be from game files. Uh, you'll just have to fly them and try it out. So let's look at the loadout. Um, I don't mind the Revenant on here. But, you know, you saw my build. Um, I'm going to put a fixed size five. I'm going to put a big old attrition five on there. Actually, let's, let's reset this guy. I, don't wanna, I forgot to check the base damage. Base damage is 1587. So let's see what happens when we do a fist build on this guy. Yeah, we're already at 2300. Um, I, I, I like to do all laser repeaters. <laughs> No ammo needed, and you saw how fast that was blowing ships up. 2527 is the damage with a full laser build. Um, you don't have to worry about ammo. Uh, for the turrets, I would replace those with attrition twos. Again, now you have more damage on your turrets. As far as the missiles go, because it's more of a dogfighter, I would keep the size threes and the size twos. Now, I would change out the infrared ignites for Strike Force 2s. Um, keep the EM Dominator 2s. And then I would do a Rester 3 on one end. And um, I believe it's the Thunderbolt 3 on the other. So I have a good mix of EM and cross section. Uh, for the shields, this guy, I I, I have a Sucarot on mine and a Rampart. But 
I would go dual ramparts. Uh, this is a PvE type of fighter. Uh, you're going to be going up against the enemy a lot, but probably not a whole lot of PvP. Uh, I'm going to put two JS400s on there. I would again go with double Stopak coolers. And it comes to the crossfields, so I would just leave it. Uh, mine has an XL1 because I had the money. So, uh, But you can definitely leave it with the crossfield. It's fine. So uh, 64,000 hit point pool for the shields. Charges up in about three minutes. 346 hit points a second. Um, the power is under half. It's a little over a third, but it's definitely under half as far as the capacity. Cooling is way down, and uh, your EM is super high at 123,000. So everybody is going to know you're coming with EM. So there you go, guys. Um, I didn't do my pricing. I'll do it for the ward real quick here. I throw my non-stock items into the cart. It's 460,000 Alpha UBC to upgrade the rampart. Uh, I'm sorry. The uh, um, a lot of that's due to dual ramparts being 106 grand, dual JS400s, 106 grand, dual snowpacks, 165 grand. The weapons aren't that bad. The weapon, I mean. But you definitely got to upgrade the coolers and and the uh, the power plants, especially if you're going to go to an all laser build like I recommend. So everything else is fairly inexpensive. So if you can manage to make half a million in the game uh, and then have enough to buy this guy as well, <laughs> uh, basically have about four million before you're looking to purchase the Vanguard Ward. You can pick it up, fully upgrade it and uh go kill bad guys so with that speaking of killing bad guys let's turn over to the chase camera footage and away we go
Folks, well, thanks for watching the video here. Uh, let me know what you thought about all the different Vanguard models the Harbinger, the Hoplite, the Sentinel, which I'm flying right now. And my favorite Vanguard is the Vanguard Warden. Um, these are pretty beefy ships. You can see they make short work of their targets. And uh, I just, I've come to really enjoy flying them and I really love them. And, I was just talking to Jawa, and he really likes the Warden, too. Um, but he really didn't get to use the firepower of the Harbinger as much as I was one. But uh, please uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the video. Um, check out our website, fistofjawa.org. And uh, I guess now that I'm about to land, we'll see you next time on the channel. Be good to each other. Good night, Stan. Stay.